So just to shift the focus a little bit, and you touched on it, Danietta, that I think it would be interesting if we did share, and I don't, I'm, I, I think, you know, yeah, you're right, everybody on this call and, and in the audience has got a story about something that's happened to them, gender related, um, that has, has either been inspirational or, or really motivated them to do something different, or maybe not do something that they were going to do. Um, and so I'm interested about a personal uh, reflection that you have had on something that's happened in your professional career um, that you'll be prepared to share with us all just to give us some sense of how you dealt with it um, and I and I'm sure that you'll have a lot of people relate to some of these stories so um, Dr. Reen if I may come to you first for, for a personal experience and, and something that you'd be prepared to share with this group that would be great over to you thank you and uh, I've been uh, writing notes from all the ladies because um, I'm learning as well and I always make best that uh, in, in any panel, I will write down some takeaways for myself because it's a continuous learning. So thank you so much, uh, ladies, for sharing with the, these wonderful uh, points. Uh, before sharing a personal story on a career, uh, 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 on a career story or a challenge, uh, let me just uh, reflect on the confidence part. Uh, Last week we had within our Women's Cybersecurity Middle East group a wonderful session on confidence and how we can really build that voice that already is. And what really struck me is that, uh, as one of the ladies, he said, we need to build confidence. And I loved what Sotaba has said. She said, forget about everything. You have it all within. And the change, it doesn't start from the top. It starts from within. If we change it from within and if we believe in ourselves, if we believe in God's and Allah help and all, believe in those who love us and, you know, just block all the noise around us, then you'll be able to do that. And uh, one of the things that Nada has shared with us, she said that confidence is at best when we are first born, when are very young, at, at young, uh, at children's age, because they are very much open. They have this confidence to say their thoughts out. They share their uh, crazy ideas. They are very much, you know, open because this confidence was as, as, as it stopped. But as we grow up, as the society, as the culture keeps trimming out from this confidence, yet now we are mature. We have some role models around us. We need to be aware and we need to build those missing pieces that we have left out, uh, as we walk or as we grow up. Bring them back in. Believe in yourself. Have that passion within yourself that I can do it and I, am, I, I have earned it. And one thing is which I really uh, self uh, sensed it, just bring a list and write a list of your accomplishment from both sides, whether it was a career or how wonderful sister you are, friend, daughter, cousin, just write. Because some of us are playing the counselor role. Everyone calls us and say, we have faced that and we, have, and we are very much good listeners. So let's just list this list of uh, tasks or you know, accomplishments. And you will say, wow, I did all of that. And you know, when do I realize that I did a lot, Deborah? When uh, I, I am about to get a reward and they start listing all my accomplishments as it wow, I have done this and I start traveling because I, I was keeping doing and achieving and achieving and didn't give myself that moment to acknowledge all of these achievements, to say, I have worked all of these levels and we need to do that. To make our confidence more stronger, we need to give ourselves that right. We need to acknowledge ourselves. We need to treat ourselves to become stronger, not only for us, for the other ladies, for the younger generations, and even for our own kids, because they say yes as a reflection for what they can be when they grow up. So we need to believe in that. Sorry for <laughs> jumping onto that, but I will share a very personal uh, career story. Uh, being uh, the lead of a cyber uh, security forum and on the oil sector within Kuwait, uh, where different all the other oil companies are part of it. And um, when I entered to that room as a lead, uh, it was all male dominant, okay? And being a younger, uh, let's say, uh, a colleague with a female gender, in that woman only, uh, let's say, meeting and leading as well, there was big, a huge, you know, uh, uncertainty of my capabilities, especially they are from different companies, not my company. And uh, there was lack of trust of how can she be a lead 
why is she leading us, we are more knowledgeable, etc. And which this will come by default for any newcomer, especially if you're talking about different corporates and uh, your corporate was leading that initiative. Uh, today, I'm very much proud of saying that, Alhamdulillah Rabbil I mean, thanks to Allah, I have gained their trust by leading by example, showing them the real purpose of this committee, that we need to be stronger together. We're here to serve. We're not here to post anyone around. We are here to build these uh, relationships, and we are here all as peers. We need to work to each other, and we need uh, you know, that roadmap that our whole oil sector is depending on us as cybersecurity leaders to go through this journey. Yes, there should be a leader for this journey, but however, we're all peers in sharing responsibility in supporting each other's back and in having the uh, you know giving them the flexibility of making their own calls i give them all the support i give them all the call decisions and options and say you can make your call it's your call having that sense and building that trust it made us a very powerful uh, synergy members that today we're very much close as a second family, alhamdulillah, a very professional relationship and also on a human uh, level we're very much uh, respecting and expecting uh, uh, each others uh, and giving even the trust and having that, you know, first, uh, they call it, you know, always assume good in intentions. So this has been always one of our uh, perceptions that we now listen, not to reply, we listen to understand. And this is one of the biggest issues that, one of the biggest communication issues that when we listen, we listen just to prepare to reply. Let me defend back, let me just attack back. I have stopped this uh, behavior uh, a while ago. Well, I, when someone talks, I will not be in that defensive way. I'm listening just to reply back. I will just listen very carefully, try to understand what he's looking. Try to see it from his own perspective. And if I don't really understand, I will keep asking him even more questions. And he will say, why oh, is she not attacking me? Uh, she's even listening and she's asking me or more. Because I, for me to resolve the issue, I need to understand his perspective. And then we need to share and reach that you know, win-win situation. We need to really share that thoughts. And this is where we all come, win, uh, come out winners. So from a career and personal thing, is it's no longer for me trying to defend myself, trying to prove myself. It's really about I am confident of who I am. And I, I keep also telling my, my team members who are a little bit young and they are embarrassed of asking questions during meetings. They will see me asking questions, what does this mean? What does, even sometimes if I know it, I keep asking it to, you know, to motivate them that this is the CISO and she's asking. She's not embarrassed from asking. And I keep telling them, you think I'm not learning? I'm learning even from my seven years girls. They come with terms and technologies. We don't know about it. I mean, and she says, mom, you can do this. You can do this. And voila. I said, wow. So we keep learning from everyone. We're not like robots or, you know, uh, machine learning. We're humans. And we every day learn from everyone who's around us. So it's okay to ask. It's okay to actually be a role model. Be leading by example. Do it. And they will follow doing that because they will no longer feel embarrassed of having that awkward situation. We cannot ask. The CISO is sitting there. No. The CISO is asking herself. So let's jump in and ask as well if we need to ask. So this is my personal stories that I keep really from a personal or professional career Thank to share with others. That, that's really, really, I could just picture you in this scenario and, and just asking, and why do you think that? And what about this? And what about that? And, and so, like, you're right. Somebody thinking, boy, you're really going at me today. But, but it's because you want to understand. And that, that leadership style that you're talking about is often one that females um, and our, our gender are, um, are reported as having a, that more sort of inclusive, empathetic, uh, leadership style uh, uh, that's quite different to a male leadership style or a typical male leadership style. So it's been interesting for me to hear you say that, that it's having results and, and you're reaping the benefits of that in your organization. Um, if I can come to Louisa next. Louisa, I know that uh, you have you have an experience that you'd like to share with us. Uh, over to you. <laughs> well, um, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'd, I'd like to echo uh, what Dr. Reem was saying about confidence and just to add on that I think it's really important for the younger women coming into the industry, um, especially about, uh, you know, being confident to navigate the power dynamics in, in the industry because, uh, so, my, and I think this is a fairly benign story, 
uh, but the first ever meeting that I had when I moved to Europe um, was at the client's facility. And uh, when we finished, the chair of the meeting turned to me and said, because of course I was the only woman in the room, and turned to me and said, oh, you're the only lady here, so you can clean up the coffee cups. And he was only half joking. <laughs> and, you know, I see the chat says, wow, that's what I said. Um, but I was really very young. And had I seen an event like this, I would have handled it a billion times differently. Um, so I really agree that we need to foster this confidence. And we need to, um, you just in general, be really open about calling out what I call ambient sexism. You know, these jokes that are not really jokes, but they float around. And, you know, by the end of the week or the month that you're in the workplace, it's incredibly toxic. And I wouldn't blame any woman for wanting to leave it. Uh, so that's my story. Yeah, so we're getting a lot of reaction there in the in the chat um, that you can see. So Tapa is is chomping at the bit here to come in. Come on, so Tapa, you've got a, you've you, got a, you know what you, you know what you you will encounter these microaggressions. You will encounter. So you have to kind of design a response for them. Like you know. When I landed up at the National Police Academy for the training, I found I was the only woman in that entire batch of IPS officers with 79 other male officers. Now, I came from a very conservative background, a conservative middle class family, and had studied in an all girls convent school. So you can understand what kind of a uh, background I was coming from. And so obviously, you know, I. I would fall behind my male counterparts in races. I would hurt myself every day, right? So, but then, you know, actually you have to do a little bit of um, chiseling up and then you discover, well, there are certain areas where you're better than the others uh, um, uh, with you. And I found that I was better in forensics. I was better in weaponry. And uh, a couple of things. So at times, you know, in life, you also have to pat yourself and say, okay, I've come this far. That means there is something inside me. So let me, while I'm working on my weaknesses, let me use my strengths to raise the bar, you know. And, but then you always have to have those skills and capabilities because that is something where you can draw, with that, you can draw a longer line, you know. And obviously their line is going to become shorter than yours. So these things are very important. These mind games are very important. And uh, we women have to learn these things. Because see, what is happening is, like, you know, when I went to the field, my seniors would always, you know, uh, always, they were always doubting, oh, will she be able to manage the law and order? Will she be able to do this, do that? You know, thinking on my behalf. But then, you know, at one point of time, and thinking about my welfare that, okay, I should be in the side uh, postings and all. But then, you know, beyond a point, I realized that the problem was not with me. It was in the way they were thinking about me. So the only response I could find is to excel in wherever I was, uh, wherever, I, wherever I was planted, you know, try to grow wherever I was planted and prove to them, okay, look, I am equal to all of you because I've received the same kind of training. There were no concessions when I was do, undergoing that training. So many a times, you know, you have to keep talking to yourself. You see a lot of uh, the sports persons, they keep talking to themselves. So that is something which we need to do quite often. You know? Absolutely. And I think, you know, that kind of defensive responses that I'm, I'm actually it's kind of like playing the long game isn't it but I'm not only I'm not going to even bother reacting I'm going to just get better than you and that's exactly. quite an interesting comeback but what I what I agree with Louisa is that the longer that we tolerate it and at the time she tolerated it and I'm sure many of us have tolerated that kind of um, bias towards us as a gender I think that the only way that we will eliminate it is to not tolerate it and to call it out and to say um, that actually we don't really appreciate that. And some, sometimes, and in my experience, if you actually call out that comment as hurtful or, you know, just downright obnoxious, um, that other person 
meant it as a joke and didn't mean to offend you but the longer that that we let that carry on then that all perpetuates and i think we were all talking about that it's how to change that culture and society which you can't do overnight but that you're saying more yeah. and more of us and the more often that we say that's not appropriate um that that's really where we have the power exactly as you were saying danietta and and just concentrating on the work and the job in hand rather than focusing on on your gender or, or you know what you're wearing or or yeah clean up the tea or whatever it might be danietta do you exactly. have a story to share with us actually i have several but i'm going to do one <laughs> <laughs> um you know <laughs> And actually, before I share the story, I wanted to kind of go back to one of the, the points that Sutapa was making. Um, I think in the security field, uh, a lot of the, the resistance we get as, as women um, is more due to the biases other people are carrying. It's not anything personal. And I think that that's a very, very important piece to bring out and when I was younger in the security field that was something that I really really had to wrestle with because just in general when you're younger you're just trying to figure out who I am what's my voice you know how do I, how, how do I fit into this bigger piece of society what am I contributing what's my gifts and when you have someone coming to you saying well I heard you explain how this security architecture should work but uh, Bob what do you think you know, immediately you start to question, well, did, was I speaking appropriate? Did I not say something important? Did, you know, where, <laughs> how did this happen to me? And that kind of gets into to, um, one of the stories that I had, um, especially early on in my career. Um, I had a lot of, I, I would go into a meeting and sit down and like they said uh, Louisa was sharing I would be probably the only woman in the room and that's exactly what would happen to me I would start saying okay this is what we have to do for cybersecurity this is what the network architecture looks like these are the, the components that we need to uh, consider and fix when we look at you know access controls or any of the technical things that we're talking about and you know my view at this point i'm i'm leading the meeting and i would have men that would just stop and say okay um james what did you think about that and you're thinking like what did, was i not speaking was it not clear um was there were there something on the slide let me clean up the slide here and you know and, and they don't think about it but in, in a way what they were in essence saying to me was it's nice, but your opinion really doesn't matter. And until I can get two or three other men in this room to concur with what you just said was the way that we should go, then it's it's irrelevant. Um, and, and that's a very, very tough thing, I think, for women, especially when you're starting out, um, to really kind of build that confidence around who you are, that you know what you're talking about, you know what you're doing, um, and of course, like we were saying earlier, keep the focus on, okay, I'm here to help you with security. Okay, let's smile about that because that's, that's why I'm here. And after seeing, you know, several opportunities of seeing success and okay, hey, we were actually able to get through our audits or we, we were actually, then, then that confidence came. But in the beginning, it's very tough. And, it, and for any women on this call, especially if you're younger and starting in this, my thing is just to, to stick with it and be clear on who you are, regardless of what someone is coming out and saying or doing, just be very clear on who you are because you're helping change the needle. They're, they're eventually gonna come around. They're, they're gonna see that, yeah, you know what? She's been right 10 times out of 10 times. Maybe I need to listen to her the first time. You know, so I think that's, um, you know, part at least of, of the experiences I've had, even even to today as a business owner, um, you know, when we go out and we talk about um, opportunities with organizations, sometimes they still have a hard time of understanding, oh, the woman, how am I supposed to take this? But, um, you know, and I know we might get into this a little bit, easy, a little bit later, but I did want to bring this point up um, that, 
the benefit that I see um, for women is that we talk about things holistically, that we bring in these varying different perspectives. And I think Dr. Ring talked about it, all the questions. Um, and, you know, to use the term Louisa was saying earlier, we, we talk about convergence. And I think that's a place of opportunity. So I'm going to stop there. I don't want to steal the, the thunder from later. But to me, I think that's part of what my colleagues eventually got to see that, you know, I wasn't just technically right, but I also part of why I was technically right was because I was coming at it from a different place. Um, and that was able to change that perspective and take it off of, uh, yeah, we heard that woman, but, you know, <laughs> we're not clear we really want to engage or, or um, take her seriously. Yeah, you were like background noise. Uh, yeah, just just there to put something on the table. And yeah, I, I get exactly. that <laughs> myself. So very interesting. Thank you for sharing mm -hmm. those stories. And, and in that scenario, Danietta, if you apply what Dr. Reem was saying earlier, one of her sort of key takeaways for me is if we, you could sit for ages and say, well, why did that happen? What did I do? What right. did I say? Was it what I was wearing? Did I not speak clearly enough? Or was something on my slide? Exactly. You know, just right. what can I learn from this? and you you need to do that very quickly and in the moment don't you and, and tackle yes. it which is exactly what what you've done which is which is excellent um just just a brief story of myself a very similar one is i i was um down to do some crisis management training um to a group of seniors um who walked into the room and i was already there and i was prepared um, time got to the, the place where we were going to start start the training and I stood up and started to deliver the training and they said well where's the trainer I said it's me they thought I was there just to take the notes and um, not do deliver the training and they were all quite disappointed I have to say that it was a female um, so yeah there's there's been times and I think we've we we're all going to get on to talk about this now because I know that David and ISRM were, were keen for us to talk about this and it's true is you mentioned it Danetta when you're young when you're a young professional and starting out and all of us are not as confident we don't have those experiences we don't have the confidence we haven't necessarily been around those role models to know how to handle those kinds of situations